Today I'm going to discuss about uh, construction waste, in fact. So this is a topic that came to me uh, already 10 years ago while I was doing a renovations for my uh, parents and where I struggled a lot with a lot of waste that we, have, uh, we were producing. Uh, last year, so way more recently, I was in France and worked for a friend of mine who has a company of uh, wood uh, woodworking company. And again, I was confronted to the same problem. What do you do with wood dust? And they had no option for that as they were apparently not producing enough. Coming back to Australia in January, I started renovating my own place. And again, I was confronted again to the same problem. What do I, what do, I do with my construction waste. So today I'm going to discuss about the solutions that can that exist and that we need to focus on for uh, sustainable managing management of construction waste. So as you all know, with uh, the growing uh, world population, there is a huge rise in construction demands, notably because most of the people now live in cities, so the urbanization is rising uh, to the moon and many countries face housing shortage. This is the case in France where we are missing 200,000 uh, houses. This is the case in Australia as well. Uh, there are plenty of articles that describe this problem, notably in Sydney. And the problem next to that is that the construction industry relies on natural uh, materials and it uses a lot of this material and it produces a huge amount of uh, construction waste that is notably construction and demolition waste. And so notably the, the, the amount of construction waste is evaluated to be 1 billion tons per year globally, which represents a third of the total waste produced and it emits about 40% of the uh, um, carbon dioxide. So in the 70s, in the mid 70s, the Europe introduced a waste framework a directive that was posing the basics for the waste hierarchy. Uh, this waste hierarchy is divided into six uh, levels from the most to the least preferred. The first one is the prevention. Prevention go through better planning before even producing something. Then the redux, reduction through a better design of the product. Reusing with no further processing means like, for example, you have a brick and you will reuse it as a brick. No, no crushing, no smashing, no cutting, nothing. Recycling means that you will use this uh, brick, for example, that we, you will process to create powder, for example. Recover when you cannot recycle anymore. Often it's, this is uh, used for uh, making energy, notably by burning. And the really last resort is disposal. This is through notably for uh, hazardous uh, wastes. But so to try to reduce uh, and to minimize the amount of construction and demolition waste, research has focused on three different areas. First, the prevention. I will show you that this goes through education, planning, and design. The second is the reuse of products that, uh, um, that goes through moving from a linear to a circular economy. And finally, recycling by transforming uh, construction waste into new building material. So first, prevention. Here I'll show the uh, output that comes from uh, different studies based on construction industry stakeholders' interviews. So first, the Euro European Parliament has defined the prevention of waste as the measures that are taken before a substance, a material, or a product has even become a waste. The construction industry keeps increasing its amount of waste despite legislation and financial incentives. This is pretty much the last industries around the world 
that still has a growing amount of waste each and every year. So the research has focused on trying to decipher which construction stages could be improved to minimize the amount of uh, construction and demolition waste. And based on uh, stakeholders' interviews, studies have shown that there is a huge lack of awareness around the impact of construction activities on the environment. This was notably shown in an Australian study where each and every actor of, of the construction industry, from the, the builder to the manager to the fabricant of the different products, were not fully aware of the impact of their activities on the planet. Another uh, study has shown that there is often an excess in material handling, and this is due to poor planning and design. The, the solutions that exist to better prevent uh, the, 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 the making of uh, construction waste is first the education. The education can be, can be done in really simple ways the, here I give two examples, the climate fresk, which I am part of, uh, which goes in three hours uh, to uh, the cause and the consequences of human activities on the planet. This gives a good overview of the, 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 the big, uh, big image of the causes and the consequences. Here at Thrive, we do also educate. Uh, we uh, publish uh, papers and podcasts and videos uh, that advocate for future beyond sustainability and even thrivability. So education is a key uh, uh, factor to raise awareness among stakeholders. But often a manager th thinks that um, the time and the money that they are going to dedicate to uh, educating uh, their um, employees is going to be lost. And this is, in fact, not true as shown by the studies, because a better training of all the stakeholders of the construction industry will in fact lead to a reduced time and cost uh, um, focused on managing construction and demolition waste. The other uh, way of preventing the, the making of uh, construction waste is through better planning and design. And this can be done by incorporating new technology-based systems, such as, for example, the building information modeling that was developed in uh, this paper in 2017, Wang and Cheng, where everything is based on 3D modeling and standardization of the proce procedures through the construction chains. So if you were to build a house, you would first start no matter what, by making a 3D plan of this house, having the exact measurements. This way, the construction workers can then order the exact amount of material they are going to need, reducing a lot the waste produces, produced. Second, reusing. There are examples of circular economy systems in the construction industry, but the circular economy is based on three principles. Uh, given the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, eliminating waste and pollution, circulating products and material, and regenerating nature. This, the, the resource sharing has developed intensively amongst individuals for the construction. This is true, for example, in Europe, uh, in, uh, in each and every city is now, there are fab labs, which are uh, fabricatory laboratory, exactly, uh, where you pay a little fee per year and you can access 3D printers, laser cutters, and, and so on and so forth. Here in Brisbane, where I live, there is another kind of um, uh, resource sharing uh, example, which is a tool library. The, a tool library is, works a bit the same. You pay a little fee, and you, a fee, sorry, and you will have access to several tools over the year. But there are still a lot of challenges that remain in the construction industry. First, studies have shown that there is a lot, lack of knowledge around the material properties. Often, construction builders are not sure that if they take another kind of material that the one they are used to, it is going to work the same way. There are also problems of supply, supply and storage uh, in, the, in the wall chain. And that goes together with collaboration. A lot of construction uh, companies work against each other instead of collaborating together. 
And finally, customers' behavior. Often, customers are not happy with having uh, products that do not come directly from the shop uh, as they consider it as a second-hand product, which is not exactly true. So switching to circular economy could be a way to uh, go through reuse in the construction industry. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, a study uh, led in Hong Kong showed that uh, simulated the impact of a marketplace between construction companies. This was based on a system that existed in Hong Kong at this time, where you would pay as a company, as a construction company, you would pay a little fee for having a truck coming to your um, uh, area, taking your waste and getting them to the landfill. What they did was to uh, add one layer to this uh, system, which would be a web fill, a uh, uh, online system where the products would be registered and let, let there for a little time for people to potentially buy it. And the simulation showed that this would reduce by 85% the use of landfill and uh, allow 493% of waste recovery. That would reduce a lot the needs in material coming straight from nature, as it would be just a reuse of already fabricated made material. There are a lot of marketplaces that exist and that are already used by the general public. Facebook Marketplace, for example, uh, Gumtree here in Australia, Le Bon Coin in France, where people exchange secondhand products. New marketplaces dedicated to construction uh, products have, have raised in the last years. Superyard in Australia puts together construction companies and individuals and uh, allows an exchange with money of products that are uh, over what's needed for, for the, 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 the building site. Scraps is a French company that does exactly the same. If you were to buy a uh, wood floor, for example, you will certainly buy much more than what you need. You could use these two marketplaces, for example, to put them here instead of trashing those um, uh, surnumeral uh, wood floor uh, layers. And finally, recycling. Recycling is not part of the uh, preferred way uh, of uh, re uh, using waste as per the waste hierarchy, but I'll show you that chemistry studies have shown that recycling inert material into uh, new material can lead to really interesting uh, processes. Most of the construction waste is produced during the demolition phase as inert material, glass, wood, concrete, bricks, etc. And there are multiple benefits in recycling this uh, construction waste into new raw material. First, it will divert them from landfill. Second, it can allow, I'll show you how, uh, the sequestration of CO2 through chemical treatments. And it could also allow to implement a kind of circular economy. So, Several studies are focused on trying to make new cement, which is one of the worst uh, material used in the, in the construction industry, but one of the biggest part of it. So they have crushed uh, construction waste into powder to manufacture new cement. This is true for glass. This has been done with glass. This has been done with bricks and, and, and other materials. Problem is that making cement uses a lot of energy and produces a lot of greenhouse gases. But the recent study has shown that treating this new cement with uh, carbon dioxide not only allows the sequestration of the carbon dioxide, but also it improves the st structural characteristic of this new raw material. There are other uh, industries that are now trying to make cement with the a little, little amount of energy, like cold, uh, cold making a uh, cement. This is, this is a French company that's doing that at the moment, and so on and so forth. And as I said, while recycling is not the preferred method, according to the West hierarchy, hierarchy sorry, exchange 
of this end-of-life construction material can generate a circular economy within the construction industry. So to summarize, the construction industry is one of the biggest polluters nowadays. Research has shown that there are three levers uh, of the waste hierarchy that can help reduce construction and demolition waste. Prevention through education, better planning, and better designing. Reusing through the, the, the development of circular economy amongst all the actors of the construction industry and individuals. And finally, recycling through remanufacturing of raw material from crushed uh, construction wells. This all together will divert the construction and demolition waste from landfill. So solutions exist to reduce construction and demolition waste and transform this construction industry into a sustainable with nature industry. Thank you.